for coming. <clears throat> I know that I called this press conference last minute, but I felt that it was necessary to have an audience for what it is that I'm about to say. Um, now that I have your attention, I think it's time for me to drop the ball. <laughs> or shall I say hammer? I say drop the hammer. Hammer is better. Powerful. I, Kevin Hart, have an amazing announcement today. I have bullied myself into a partnership with Focus Stars. Why? Why, you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it makes sense. It's time. I love the game. I have now been playing the game to a point to where I'm, in, I'm deeply in love with the game. And I, I, I see what the game is missing. And the game is missing me. <laughs> At this point, the game needs me. Because it's had Daniel for some time, and Daniel has done his job. Daniel has brought fun to the game, but what Daniel is missing is the black sidekick. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking for all okay. the years. I want to be the Eddie Murphy to his Nick Nolte, <laughs> the Chris Tucker to his Jackie Chan. This list can go on and on. Bottom line, I want to help him do what he's already been doing, but at a higher level. If you guys know me and follow me, you know that I really, really do believe in bringing people closer together. I love the fact that poker is a game that can take people all over the world and sit them down at a table and give them an opportunity to engage, to, to converse, to get to know each other, understand each other, and walk away with relationships they never knew that they could have. That's what I do. I love to live, love, and laugh. I want to bring this energy to the game of poker. And when I do this, poker will be elevated. Also, I'm going to make Daniel cool. <laughs> and just not that you're not cool. That's, that's a project. Just cooler, cooler, because yeah, you're already cool, Daniel. You but we're going to we're going to take the sexy level up. I'm going to bump you working up a little on bit. It, you know, and Jim, I'm watching your videos. I'm inspired. This is this is all this is all in the do. This is all in the making, man. But I think that PokerStar has already done an amazing job. They're an amazing company, and PokerStar knows poker. I, Kevin Hart, I know fun. I know how to gauge. I know how to engage. I know how to be authentic within my engagement. I want to bring my essence to this game, and I want to take the game. I want to take it up a notch, people. Okay, so you guys mark this day down in your calendar because the day is the day that poker just got fun. <laughs> it got fun and it got real. Okay, I know you guys probably want to know what am I going to do, Kevin? What are your plans? What does this mean? Well, it means everything and anything above. And I can't get into too much detail, but I'm already in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> I got a pot, and that pot's got potatoes and rice in it. And guess what? I'm throwing a little bit of meat in there as well. And it's going to be good when I dish it up. Did you get that? was an analogy on food. Got it. I was, I was, I was good until the meat part. Yeah, well, this is what I'm, I know you don't eat meat, Daniel. Cool. And I'm not going to change that. Yeah. That I understand. <laughs> you may change that within me. That, that may be the essence that I take away from you. I may walk away from this game and eat. Who knows? <laughs> At this point, I guess we'll open up to the floor. If you guys have any questions, this is time to ask me. We're going to start with Marissa from Us Weekly. Hello, Marissa from Us Weekly. Hi, Kevin. I interviewed you at uh, your GQ cover party. Sounds ah. ah. <laughs> In your face, Daniel. So, so speaking of your energy and bringing, you know, your infectious energy to this game and kind of switching things up as you do, as you've done in comedy, how, how is the poker community, how are these serious, quiet players warming up to you? What has your experience been so far? Well, you know, I think... Uh, it's funny that you bring it up because we talk about the serious side of the game. That that definitely is a uh, is something that I've noticed. But it's very hard to be that type of individual when you're around a personality like mine. I'm, I'm vibrant. Uh, I'm loud. I'm in your face, and I'm going to make my presence felt. And in doing so, I found that these guys loosen up, and I think that's what the beauty of sitting at a table with Daniel is, and it's been for quite some time. Uh, he sits at a table and it's not just about the game, and it's not just about making his calculated moves, it's about showing that I can do that, as well as being a likable individual. And when I sat at the table with these guys playing the Super High World Tournament, we had great conversation. Those guys loosen up. I mean, I think there was one point where I actually had them taking shots. One guy took a shot and he literally, I've never seen anybody get affected by a shot faster. In my life. <laughs> I think that it may have been his first shot. But it's like, the fact that he did it, it was like, whoa, what's, what, so what do we do now? I was like, it's nothing. It's over. That moment's done. But it was it was fun. And and I, I walked away from it 
with a different appreciation and understanding for that table, you know, because I play poker and I, I do it with friends, I do it with family, I do it with my wife's girlfriends just to have fun. I do it and I'm silly with my kids when we play, but it's a game that can be, that literally can be, I think, recognized on a higher level to, to be so much more uh, outside of the serious side of the game. There's levels to the game. And I just want people to understand, I want to help people understand what those levels are. And I think that, you know, with a great relationship and partnership with Poker Stars, myself, Daniel, we can do a good job of just giving people a, a different understanding and appreciation for not only what the game is, but what, if, what it can ultimately be. You know, uh, if I ever mess around and win one of these things, I think it would be the funniest thing in the world that <laughs> I stumbled my way into a championship. And I'll, I'll tell everybody to kiss my ass and say I did it, and I'm now the best in the world. <laughs> and I walk away with a attitude of feeling like, yo, I, I just like to have fun, and I accidentally won <laughs> by having fun. Like, I want to let people see that. I want to show people that the possibilities are endless if you just accept the game for not only what it is, but for what it can be. Great answer. Thank you. Really Thank yeah, you. Thank 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 Say, uh, I didn't hear the, the last part. I'm sorry. Romanian celebrities. Do I know any Romanian celebrities? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question with a straight face, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna say no, no I don't. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to know any. I want to know some. So I mean that's the beauty of the game. This is a global game. So going to Romania or meeting people from Romania is when I have to say, Hey Daniel, uh, are there any Romanian stuff? Wait, are you Romanian? Yes. Okay. <laughs> look, as I was going, I was like, Wait a minute, Daniel, what what are you? Okay. Now what one one. Uh, outside of Daniel, no, I don't. You heard about Nadia Comaneci? Say it again. Nadia Comaneci, you heard about it? You heard of Nadia Comaneci? No, no, <laughs> no, no, I haven't. When, when we, Daniel, this is where the partnership comes in. You're supposed to jump in that question. You're going to say, Kevin loves Nadia. She does love it. They hang out in LA all the time. There you go, Daniel. <laughs> Gymnastic We're, stuff. Honestly, Daniel, really, seriously, if this is going to work, Daniel, you got to have my back the same way I got yours, Fair. okay? As soon as we get out of here, educate me on the Romanian people outside of yourself. Okay. Stop being selfish. <laughs> Kevin, um, I've seen you play at the PCA and now here in these super high rollers. Mm -hmm. But can you tell me a little bit about what you've done before with poker? How much do you play? Where do you play? How long have you been playing? I've been playing a game for, for a while now, you know? Um, I've, I mean, I've, I've played cash games for, for years. It's been a way to uh, keep me out of trouble. You know, it keeps me from doing stupid things. I'm not a, I'm not a partier. I'm married. I got kids now. So good this boy. is something that my wife, you're a good boy. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. My wife, she's okay with it. Um, he's playing poker with his friends. He's, <laughs> they got a, a home game. She knows where I am, and I can sit there. And I'm out of trouble. It's, it's, it's been a, a hobby quite some time. I think now seeing the game uh, and understanding the game at this level has just been a different a different piece of added fun. You know, getting to rub elbows with these guys and sit at the table with the quote unquote pros. Uh, for me it's just been a bonus. I say quote unquote because I'm mixing it up with you guys then. Uh -huh. All right. I made it to day two. I don't you know did, if you guys understand that that's a big deal for me. I technically in my mind I won. <laughs> But it's it's uh it's something I've been doing I would say probably ten years. That's a good number. Probably about ten years playing. Hello. Hello. Hey, my name is Nadia. I'm from Essence Magazine. I was gonna say that's, that's it. That's Nadia. She's here the whole time. She's here the whole time. What is happening? How are you? I want to ask you about Nadia. So I know that you are from Essence. You are famous for person. Does it help you while you are playing with? Let's say uh, simple people, uh, or uh, do they recognize you, or maybe don't help you at all? Well, uh, everybody recognizes me because I'm a big deal. So let's just <laughs> let's all just understand that. Let's get okay. real here. Massive deal. No, actually, you know what? I leave the game uh, probably with less fans because I, I probably piss everybody off at the table when I'm done. So I end up losing supporters. The one thing that I really do, and I, I like this, is 
it's not a big deal to the people. You know, it's not. It's it's Kevin Howe, man. It's cool that you're playing the game, uh, and you know there may be some nods, but I like the fact that it's it's downplayed. You know, they're they're here to play uh, in the tournament, and you know they're here with winning on their mind. I'm the guy coming, and I'm I'm simply having a good time and having fun. So I think it's more of a big deal for me than I, than it is for them. I, it hasn't been a massive thing or hype this one. Like seeing Daniel was cool as hell with me. Like, oh man, that's the guy. Hey, Daniel. Hey. So it's I'm more excited about jumping into their into their world. There hasn't been a, a swarming of uh, you know people just overwhelming me with, oh my God, this Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart. They just think it's cool that I'm playing a game and bringing more attention to the game they love. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a great question. Daniel, I have a question for you. Um, you played against Kevin. What do you think about his game? So, like, I've been following Kevin for a while. And I, <laughs> and I would say that, like, there's a specific type of personality that is going to succeed in life. And he's, he's not the type of guy to do anything halfway. Right? And you see that the way he lives his life in, in terms of always on the go, you know, trying to be the best at whatever he does. So him coming to the game, I see potential. Right? He's obviously playing at the highest level. And like you said, he made it to day two against competition that you just don't find anywhere else in the world. So he's not starting in baby pool. He's not starting to keep pool. He's starting literally at the highest level, which is going to be a tough sledding, tough, tough, you know, tough road to getting to the top. But uh, he's got the drive. He's got the motivation. You just see that in the way he lives his life. You like that one? Did you like that one? Thank you. Glad I got glasses on. <laughs> Kevin, how has your experience been in Monte Carlo's, Carlo so far? Um, we all know that you like to incorporate James Bond type themes into your comedy acts. Yeah. Are you feeling a bit 007? I know you took a helicopter over. Yes, yes. Uh, my entrance was everything. You know, it was, all, <laughs> it was about me getting in these guys' heads. So uh, landing in a helicopter, um, waiting for everybody to be seated, walking in um, with dark glasses on. It was actually music playing. I don't know if you guys heard it, but there was a little bit of music I think it was playing. you. Was it just me? Yeah, it was just, it was just in my head. It was all going good, so I stumbled on that step. I didn't see a step. And uh, it kind of messed up the, uh, the, tail, the tail ending of my entrance. But I will say that this whole experience, it's, it's, it's only gotten better. It's only gotten better for me. And, you know, just the, the level of competition, like Daniel stated, is one thing. But I mean people. I love to see people, and I like the fact that I'm seeing all shades of people, ethnicities, you know, different different cultures. I love it. That's what. That's literally what I'm about. I, I feed off of that energy. So, putting me in place to 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 just not only compete but converse on a global level, it's it's nothing but a bonus for me, man. So, I, I think this experience has been a super plus, and I'm looking forward to many more. More importantly, I'm, I'm looking forward to the world understanding that that it's a bigger, it's a bigger <coughs> piece of potential within the game. You know, it's it's a global, it's a global game. It's something that you can do all over the world and that everybody can understand, that everybody can simply have fun. That's the part that I love the most. So Monte Carlo has been amazing because it's given me an added bonus to see that. Me, me uh, again, Kevin. Um, are you gonna get? Uh, Coaching maybe from Daniel or from from what? what? <laughs> <laughs> to even get even better. No, no, I, I don't want any help at all, and I don't say that uh, from a, a cocky standpoint because I don't, I don't think that I'm at a place where I know everything. But I'm just like figuring it out. I like I like bumping my head and, and taking some bruises and learning from the bruises that I've taken. I think you get better with experience. You get better. As you lose, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to sit up here and just start winning. I'm going to figure it out. And I think the more people see me figure it out, the more to motivate those who don't play the game to go, oh, man, you know what? I can figure it out. I can get better. Like, I don't, I don't have to sit and study and read the book. I'm the opposite. I'm the complete opposite of that. But I'm just going to figure it out. That's what I've done in life, and so far it's worked. Let's see if I can do the same thing. Apart from Daniels, of course, were there any other players that you admire their style of play? Did you enjoy playing with anyone in the Super High Roller, especially? I, I literally, I can say that <laughs> there was a, there was a, the, I can't think of his name. Dan Coleman. Dan Coleman. Dan Coleman in a row. Dan Coleman. Yeah. He's fine. Dan Coleman just 
He's funny because Dan just likes to, to come up with weird prop bets all day and, and I'm his I'm his his rival. I'll take any of the prop bets just to make it fun. But there were two there were two German guys that I played with. Um, Igor. 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 Yes. Igor. Igor. I love Igor. Igor's personality was great. Igor is another person that just loves the the engaging conversation. He he doesn't like the games to be of tight. So he and I had great back and forth conversation. And then there was one guy uh, that was German who just didn't like to talk at all. That and was like all the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept poking, I just kept poking the bear. And he eventually took his headphones off. And I was like, you're going to have to eventually talk to him. He's going to just let you not talk to him. And I was like, why is this not a big deal for you? I'm sitting next time. Smile. Like, why do you not? Why are you not embracing this moment? And he just ended up laughing and having a good time. It's like I just kept poking that bear that was quiet. And the fact that I got him to eventually talk, it was it was fun. And you know, we started going back and forth. I think I probably got about three sentences out of him. Which is, uh, <laughs> said that was pretty amazing. So that was a big deal. Well, uh, I want to ask you. Maybe one of the most popular questions journalists always ask the celebrities: Where do you get time for your acting career? Now you are ambassador of Water Stars. You also have family hobbies. Where do you take time? Um, I think you you make time for what you want to do. You know, I think you prioritize based on the importance of. Uh, the things that you are implementing into your life. Like Daniel said, I don't know how to do things halfway. I don't, I don't do things just to do them. I'm not a, I'm not a NASCAR, which means I don't, I don't just wear a bunch of stickers to say that I have a bunch of relationships. If it doesn't coincide with my lifestyle, it's That's not clear, because if you look at his Instagram, Tommy John, he does show those off quite a bit. Yeah, and they're, you know, they're good underwear. They're great. You know, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to box Thank you very much. See, that's why I said that. Yeah. I was hoping box to get some box coming to you. Box coming to you. Thank you. Tell me uh, I, I just, I just, for, I, the goals of becoming a mogul are real. Um, and you can't become a mogul by not working. You can't um, become the highest version of yourself and succeed by not trying to put your hand in as much as possible. Um, as a comedian, I'm trying to make history. I'm trying to do things on a monumental level. As an actor, I want to become a global box office movie star. I want to be known all over the world for a person that can bring people closer together. So within anything that I do, it has to have that same effect. If you look at my relationship with Nike, it's global. If you look at me now, the poker stars, it's global, but it's, it's all based around the same, the same hub of putting me around people all over the world. If it doesn't do that, and it doesn't give me that opportunity to engage, to make things fun, to have myself in a position to be infectious, like he said, and, and make people hold hands or laugh, then it doesn't work. So the time that I'm putting into everything is important because of the overall plan. So this is something that literally fits in my plan. It's all making sense, and I think ultimately it's uh, it's put me in a position to just make the world better. I understand my purpose now. It's a higher purpose. I was brought here to bring people closer together. That's my that's my purpose, Daniel. I figured it out. Damn it. This was important. This was important, guys. That's what it is. See, she smiles. She gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? Uh, Kevin. Uh, Last night on your Facebook, you said you had an epiphany of how you were going to um, promote poker and the things you were going to do. Can you give us any insights to what that might be like now? Well, I don't want to give you too much. I think the, the amazing thing about this announcement is that it gives you guys a taste, gives you a tease. And, and now what you should do is understand that there's a lot more to come. You know, uh, this guy right here, I'm not a fan of. I'm looking forward to becoming a friend. Looking forward to building this relationship. And he and I doing things that can just kind of shift and mold this game into something else. It's been amazing for so long. Pokestars has been amazing for so long. So where do you guys see the added bonuses and the pluses that, that I plan on bringing? Some good stuff that's in store. Like I said, we're in the kitchen cooking. 
but you'll see in due time. I don't want to give all of that stuff up. Stop being selfish, sir. Please don't try to probe me for more information. <laughs> I, I think just his presence, personally, like brings a new vibe to poker, which is like somewhat, you know, people talk about poker changing and you know being more of a serious game. He shows, he proves that you can play a serious game for lots of money and actually have fun and connect with people. And you could try to kill people at the table, but still have a laugh with them and you know connect, as he says. And it seems like it's part of what he does. And like he talked, you know, to answer her question, she, she was talking about how, like, how, how do you find time? He's just one of those people, one of those rare breeds of people that just keeps going. You know, he just keeps growing and big and becoming a, you know, a mogul, as he said. A lot of poker players have their different quirks and rituals. Have you developed any kind of good luck rituals or any special talisman or good luck charms that you use? Uh, well, there's two things that I have right now. Um, one of them is the, I call it the sneak and peek. Uh, this will become <laughs> massive in the game. It's uh, when a person makes a bet at me and I take my glasses down. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. You I saw it earlier. Yes. Yes. Sneak and peek. It's called the sneak and peek. It's just a little, just a little thing right there. Just off. I just look at him and I, and I push him back up. That's the one thing. And that's going to catch on. It's people, great. people all over the world are doing the sneak and peek. The other thing is the confusion behind my checker bet. It's the, I don't know. See that right there? It looks like I'm about to check, but then I pull it back. And I go, ah. That right there pisses people off. That's next level. Yeah, that's next level stuff. These are my moves. So it's just those two for now. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, I'm probably gonna add more. As I go on, I'll add more. One thing I'm gonna stop doing is stacking my chips up. Everybody's always stacking their chips up. I'm just gonna let mine be a mess. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just gonna let it be a mess and just slow up the game at times. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's gonna be the next thing right there. Just searching for the chip. <laughs> that one. Yeah, this is how much, guys. This what is that? I don't know, sir. It's not my job to count it. That's not, I just know that I want those many. That's what I'm gonna say. Those many. Those many yeah. chips. That's, how much are you betting? Those many. Yeah, yeah, those many. <laughs> Strip poker. Strip poker with my girlfriend. Uh, if I if I still have to play strip poker at this point, <laughs> that means that this relationship is not going well. Uh, no, no, she's never. We've never played strip poker. Uh, but I can say, you know, in due time, before I was a married man, before <laughs> I got to this point, that is something that was fun in my heyday. You know, it's a it's a great icebreaker um, <laughs> uh, to uh, men out there in a casual. What I'm saying before before I was married, so that was done. I'm gonna shut up for my wife. I saw a photo of you playing with Dan Bozerian. How how was it to play with him and in that game with Sean Robert Ballon and some uh, others? That's uh we we have a, a fun game we play. Dan Dan is quite the character. Dan is a, he's a fun guy, he's a loud guy. So that conversation you can imagine is, is a crazy back and forth conversation. I mean, it's just a, those, those games are, are, are heavy ego contests. Uh, but Dan, Dan and I have known him for quite some time and you know, it's just men being men. That's a room honestly where you probably hear some of the most outlandish stuff that I think I've heard. Some non-PC stuff. Yes, maybe. yes, I can't repeat those, yeah. those uh, <laughs> conversations here, but it's a different, once again, I mean, it shows the difference in in the environment that you create. That's a completely different environment with those guys, and it's such a, a, such a uh, difference in character between everybody that plays there. So it's fun, no matter what, we have fun. But Dan is a, he's a good guy, he's a different guy. That's what he is. That's a good way to describe him. He is, he's authentic. There you go. There's only one Dan. Yeah. yeah let's just say sure. that. <laughs> Daniel, you've talked a little bit about what um, Kevin will bring to the game of poker, but what does it actually bring in bringing attention to poker? What does it mean to you as well? Well, I like like he said, you know, when he first you know started this thing, it's like I've been kind of looking for a sidekick, and sometimes it's tough when you got. He's like he said, the guys with the headphones and the Germans, but Kevin brings that out naturally, right? This isn't a stretch for him. This isn't him having to do something that he doesn't just naturally do. He's naturally a comedian. He's always, uh, you know, lighting up the room, you know, changing the energy. So I like the fact that he's coming into poker because, um, you know, it's a serious game, like I said before, but he proves that, you know, this is something that people can come together and do socially. And like, even like he said, you know, his wife likes that he's staying out of trouble. 
right? <laughs> so instead of being out where she doesn't know where he's at, poker's a game where you can just kind of like connect with friends, you know, have a little fun, competition, get your, you know, the ego sort of thing, as you mentioned. But uh, he just naturally, he doesn't have to do anything different than he already is, and he just brings people to the game, and they say, hmm, well, Kevin Hart's playing, well, let me let me learn a little bit of what he's doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, you travel around around the world. What are the best places uh, um, you've been and best for playing uh, uh, poker? Maybe you have your favorite casinos. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, look, there's a lot of places that are amazing. I hate I hate saying what the best place is because I think that's the beauty of traveling the world. You you always see and find something that's new and that's different. Um, no place is like home, you know. So I think for me, the the best place, of course, is always. Uh, in your environment. So my environment is in my house with, you know, the, the closest people to me, and that's my friends and my family, and we have our little games that we play once a week, and simple games, but what makes it fun is that we sit, drink, dare, talk, uh, and, and poke fun at one another. And those games literally have been going on for years now. It's just, they act more as a bonding, uh, uh, a bonding uh, platform for us, and it's just something that Literally, I think, keeps me grounded. You know, when you have a tight group of people in a tight circle and nothing comes into that circle, it's just ways for you to always appreciate those that have been around you from the beginning. So, for me, it would be my home. That's the, that's the best place. Not about the money, it's more about the conversation and love. That's the best place. Kevin and Daniel, thank you so much for your time. And thank Kevin, you. thank you for calling this press conference oh, today. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you guys responding on such a short notice. This means the world to me. But the press conference was worth it. It was worth it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thank so you. much. Thank you. Should have finished with a sneaky peek. Sneaky peek. I should have brought last. I should have learned it. That's what I'm going to teach me. I got to incorporate that. Watch this thing.